last lecture I discussed on micro machine micro sensors thermal. Today's lecture I will just highlight micro machine micro sensors mechanical. That means how the mechanical energy are translated into the electrical energy and how that electrical energy is picked up that is the basis of the micro machine micro sensors mechanical. And I remember in lecture number 2 or 3 I discussed on sensors it measurements and there I explain on mechanical micro sensors what kind of measurements are there in mechanical micro sensor I hope all of you know. So, now those measurements I have to convert into some electrical signal either resistance change or voltage change or capacitance change or current change whatever it is. So, that the next part I can process those signals for some kind of actuation. So, now the mechanical micro sensors is physical principle is transformation of mechanical signal into electrical signal for display or further electronic treatment. That further electronic treatment is basically the signal processing. So, that is the basic principle. Four important types of mechanical micro sensors will be discussed in this course and those senses are pressure, flow, acceleration, gyros. Gyro is a rotation sensor. In today's lecture, I will discuss in detail on the pressure sensors okay? and acceleration, gyro and flow sensors will be discussed at a later stage in some other lectures. Now, the application areas of mechanical micro sensors are given here. Primary application areas are process industry, automotive electronics, medical devices and equipment, household appliance. These are, these are major application areas of mechanical micro sensors. With the increase of safety and comfort requirements, the automotive industry is probably the fastest growing sensor market for applications such as airbags, active suspension control, anti-lock brake systems, gas injection and combustion control, tire pressure monitoring and others. The mechanical micro sensors major use and application is in automobile sectors. For application in airbag, suspension, anti-lock braking system which is known as ABS micro sensor, injection and combustion control of the fuel and tire pressure. So, there the sensors are various types not the pressure sensor is using. In some case you will acceleration sensor, some case pressure sensor, some case you need the rotation sensor also. So, the major thrust of the mechanical micro sensors is with respect to the automobile application. Now, what are the readout techniques in mechanical sensors? Those are piezo resistive readout technique, piezo hall readout technique, piezo junction readout techniques. What are those effects? Piezo resistive elements you know are sensitive to the stresses that are induced by deformation in the microstructure. Deformation of the microstructure is a mechanical phenomena and mechanical energy change that will deformation how the material will be deformed by application of thrust, by application of jerk, by vibrating the module that is the deformation and because of that 
the traces will be there and because of that stress if you apply a stress sensitive element which is the piezo resistance then automatically the change of resistance can be converted into the change of voltage or current. So, easily we can pick up the signal that is one readout technique. Second one is piezo hall that is based on the observation that an electric field is developed perpendicular to the current flow if subjected to a shear stress. Current is flowing through a sensor element. Now, if you apply stress and electric field normal to the direction of current will change and that is basically the Hall effect is not it. So, when that Hall effect that Hall effect is basically there one magnetic field is a Hall, Hall uh, measurement set you know you, uh, there is a magnetic field there, but here there is no magnetic field is known as piezo Hall. Piezo Hall means voltage and current perpendicular direction is changing with application of non magnetic field with application of the pressure that means stress that is why is a in, in semiconductor physics the Hall effect what you have studied not the same kind, but similar kind of effect you can see in some of the materials where you can see the piezo Hall by application of pressure the voltage will appear perpendicular to the current direction that is a piezo Hall effect that effect is sometimes used for the pickup electronic readout technique. Now, third one is a piezo junction effect here current gain and V B depends on the applied stress. V B is basically base emitter voltage of the of the junction or transistor base emitter junction or p n junction the cut in voltage which we call it that voltage as well as the beta current gain of the transistor changes with application of the stress inside the silicon material. When that effect is utilized that is known as piezo junction effect change of the V B as well as beta. We have seen the change of V B and beta with respect to temperature in your circuit class biasing of the circuit is necessary because of that thermal stability bias thermal stability, but here you, 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 you will come across a different phenomena which is known as a piezo junction effect that is basically the change of the V B E as well as beta with stress produced inside the semiconductor material. Okay. So, the readout techniques continuation other than these three are also available and those readout techniques are resonance structure, deformation and displacement. Deformation and displacement detection and that deformation and displacement detection one is the capacitive another is the optical interference. Optical interference is a promising for high temperature application and capacitive is used even in low, temp, low frequency application and uh, and, and a normal mechanical sensor use the capacitive change that is deformation and displacement. If, if something is a deformed the capacitance change that is basically not the pro inherent property of the material. In earlier three crash, cases whether it is a piezo hall or is a piezo resistive effect or the piezo junction that is the material property, but here the physical change is the external capacitance if you can make parallel plate capacitance in one plate is deformed. So, because the capacitance is going to change. So, that is not internal property of the material, but the external uh, the fabricated capacitance value is going to change due to the deformation and displacement of the microstructure that may be used. Okay. And optical interference is also an important phenomena which is used in MOEMs. MOEMs opto electromechanical sensors there this particular effect is used and that effect is is not going to modulate a change in high temperature application. Okay. So, that is another advantage the of this particular effect optical interference. 
that height the temperature will modify that piezo junction effect temperature may modify the piezo resistance effect but if you use the capacitive or optical interference phenomena in a sensing readout circuitry so those are insensitive to temperature variation that is one advantage thermal noise will not be there clear will not be will not affect the sig sensor signal output that has got advantage over others piezo hall or piezo junction or piezo resistive phenomena. Now, another important the readout technique is a resonant structure. A frequency signal is interesting from the point of view of data acquisition. You see in some case of mechanical sensors we can we can sense the the mechanical signal with a change of frequency frequency change is also electrical electrical measurement i can say change of frequency so if i make a resonator and because of the say vibration or deformation of the structure if the resonance frequency of the structure is changed so that change of resonance frequency may be a measure of the measurement isn't it so that is that particular the frequency change of the structure and uh, is, uh, is sometimes you know the piezo electric material quartz lithium nabit those materials may be used for this kind of readout techniques a resonant structure you have to make either say uh, the tuning fork kind of thing or simply the vibrator or resonator you can make out of the material by micro machining and those things will also uh, the frequency will change by deformation. If you apply stress inside the material, so because of the stress change the resonance frequency may also change and if you pick up that resonance change and there is a relation between stress change, stress versus the resonance frequency then that kind of thing you can use for making this mechanical sensor. Okay. So, now uh, these are the various kinds of readout techniques used in mechanical sensors. Now, what are the main measurements of mechanical micro sensor? The main measurements of mechanical micro sensor are acceleration, deceleration, force, torque, pressure, stress, similar kind of things are written with stroke, flow rate, flow of fluid, maybe air, maybe liquid flow of fluid is also some mechanical phenomena. Position and angle detection by change of the structure deformation position of the some sensing element may change that position or angle. Displacement those are basically the measurements of mechanical micro sensor and when we sense the acceleration deceleration that is known as accelerometer force or torque that we call it sometimes force or, or torque pressure sensor also is called pressure or stress change is also pressure sensor flow, flow rate change which sense that is known as the flow sensor position detector when the angle or rotation changes that is known as a gyro sensor. So, this kind of sensors are available depending on which measurements are detected in those kinds of sensors. Now, the what are the mechanical structures used in mechanical sensors? Already most of the structures you are familiar, cantilever is shown here and the cantilever structure has got many application in case of mechanical structures. Then there is a bridge, this is a bridge or it is sometimes called a flexure that means the two support beam is there and in between there is a thin membrane when it is supported by the two frame then it is known as a bridge. Third structure is a diaphragm or membrane, diaphragm and membrane 
are similar but not exactly same. So, for mechanical structure point of view, there is a small difference between a diaphragm and a membrane. What are those differences? A membrane is formed by tension and a diaphragm is formed by stiffness. So, we have to know what is the difference between tension and stiffness. So, there is another difference. If a structure exhibits elasticity, it is a diaphragm, but in membrane, the elasticity property is not considered. Although by appearance both are almost same, but from mechanical properties point of view, the there is a slight difference between a diaphragm and a membrane. Both diaphragm, membrane, beads are cantil and cantilevers are the common microstructures which are used in different kinds of micro sensors. Now, detection of mechanical movement as I mentioned the readout techniques, one is a capacitive pickup a resistive capacity pickup is this one, a resistive or conductive pickup opposite, opposite of resistance change is a conductance change. So, resistive or conductive pickup, inductive this is sometimes called is amperometric pickup that is change of current. When change of current by certain technique we can pick up the current change that is known as the inductive pickup. Okay. So, capacitive, resistive and inductive all these three pickups are used in depending on your application, depending in your in your basic principle of operation of the of the mechanical sensor. Now, here are some examples. Capacitive measurement of the deflection of a sample cantilever, simple cantilever beam this is the simple cantilever beam which is shown here. This is the cantilever beam structure one here, another is a cantilever beam here. So, now how it is basically deflection is converted into capacitance change. In this kind of structure you can see in a both case this is one and this is a second case. In both the cases the parallel plate capacitance is used has been fabricated here. Here is the one electrode top electrode this is the bottom electrode and in between bottom electrode is here and top electrode is here in between there is a dielectric the dielectric is here you can see is the air gap. Then the capacitance value depends on what factor one is the dielectric thickness means gap between the top electrode and bottom electrode, dielectric constant of the dielectric medium and what is the third? The overlapping area. These are the three parameter based on which the capacitance value will change. Now, in this kind of structure, if there is a vertical motion of this particular upper cantilever beam, if it vibrates top and bottom, then what will happen? What will happen? Then the gap between the top electrode and bottom electrode will change. So, automatically the delta C will change. Okay. There is another configuration in this side number one configuration you see here. Now, here again the pickup plate is this plate, bottom plate is a pickup plate, top one is a cantilever beam. If the cantilever beam is fixed, now the pickup plate if it moves in lateral direction. So, how much is the overlap area if moves in this direction for example, here and here okay. and automatically the overlap area between top and bottom electrode will change and because of the change of overlap area capacitance will change. Here the the dielectric constant is not going to change and gap between the top and 
bottom electrode is not going to change, but A the area overlap area A is going to change. So, depending on your requirement both the techniques are useful, you can use either the technique 1 or you can use technique 2. In one case one of the top electrode is going to change, another case the bottom is move in lateral direction, so that the overlap area may change. So, this is an example of simple cantilever beam, how it can be used for capacity pickup. Next is the piezo resistive measurement of the deflection of a simple cantilever beam. So, the piezo resistive pickup is explained here. You can see here a structure which is having a proof mass and a bridge kind of thing. In, in, in earlier view graph I showed you some bridge kind of thing, this is similar here is a bridge. This bridge has got two support, one is this and another is a one right, right hand side, another left hand side to support beam are there and in between that there is a bridge which is a thin, thin kind of cantilever. But cantilever the open end there is a proof mass attached to the cantilever. And now depending on the vertical movement or motion or pressure on the proof mass the bend the, the flexure will bend it will deform. And if you can make a piezo resistor in this particular location which is a highly sensitive location and here this particular region is highly sensitive region. If you make a piezo resistor in this region and then automatically the movement of the proof mass top and if you if, if, if vertically if you moves, moves top and bottom then here there will be bend and there maximum stress region the piezo resistance will change and here you can just measure the resistance values or if you want to convert the resistance values into a voltage change. So, accordingly you can use certain circuit like Wiston's bridge similar kind of thing. So, you can get the resistance change converting into voltage change. Now, what is done here? Doped silicon resistance are fabricated which is a which is very common in normal integrated circuit technology. And this technology is well established, so the cost will be less. And doped silicon will have a strain gauge factor, factor which is known as KGF, that is much higher than that of metal. Gauge factor KGF defines the sensitivity and is the ratio of the change in fractional electrical resistance change delta R to the mechanical strain epsilon m that is the KGF which is known as a gauge factor. And strain gauge factor of silicon is in the range of 50 to 100, whereas the strain gauge factor KGF of metal is of the order of 2. So, metal strain gauge which are being used quite a long time in, K, in, in civil engineering people, where deformation of beam, the movement of the bridge. So, heavy structure deformation those people use many strain gauge sensors and those are basically thin film metals. But we found that gauge factor of the metal strain gauge is nearly 2. On the other hand silicon strain gauge has gauge factor nearly 50 to 100 is enormously high, but those resistance which is the doped silicon has to be made over a thin membrane and those thin membrane or thin the, uh, the flexure has to be fixed on the heavy structure whose strain we want to measure. So, that was not available in earlier days that is why they use the thin film metal strain gauge, but due to the advent of the micro machining technology now 
this doped resistance its gauge factor is very high doped silicon resistor gauge factor is very high that is being used in strain gauge for strain measurement of the heavy structure when it is deformed. Okay. So, that is the, the KGF and utilizing that strain gauge uh, factor we can make sensors which may be which may have lot of application in mechanical and civil engineering uh, um, devices. Now, silicon single crystal silicon is a very good piezoelectric material okay. and it is highly suited for the conversion of mechanical deformation to an electrical signal and is used as the basic material for piezoresistive sensors for mechanical signals such as pressure, flow, force, acceleration. Why silicon is an advantageous material I told you in earlier lecture also I explained in detail. But here some of the salient points again I will highlight before going into detail of the mechanical sensor. Silicon piezo resistance sensor show better performance compared with the classical meat and steel gain just now I explained why it is better. Now single crystal silicon as piezo resistive material and its advantages are manifold namely silicon is a very robust material gauge factor just now I told is is enormously high compared to the metal strain gauge. Other parameters which tempted the people to use the single crystal piezo resistive material for sensor mechanical sensor application are good matching of resistors can be achieved which is particularly useful in if Houston bridges are used because Houston bridge has to be balanced. So, for that you need good matching of the resistors. The resistors are limited to the surface of the element where in bending these stresses are maximum that is very important parameter important point. What is that? This doped silicon resistance where you make you do not make in the the interior bulk of the silicon it is made at the surface because what is the junction depth of this uh, doped piezo resistance is nearly 2 micron or 2.5 micron nearly that that is near the surface where total the thickness of the wafer is 500 micrometer and you are making the resistance within 2 to 2.5 micrometer that means this is in the surface and this kind of the the high sensitive stress regions are where at the surface. So, that is why since you can easily make the element at the surface which is bending. So, then you can pick up the maximum maximum signal out of the deformation. Techniques is very suitable for miniaturization of sensor I should not repeat it. Signal amplification and temperature compensation circuitry can easily be integrated on the sensor chip that I highlighted many times earlier also. Now, here I will show you the diagram on which the four piezo resistors are fabricated and where are the actual location. If you want to use a Houston's bridge for sensing the resistance change in terms of voltage, so you have to make a bridge and that Houston's bridge you know there are four resistances. Then those four resistances will give you the null condition of the bridge if there is no force applied on the sensor. That means, when sensor is not sensing the measurement normally the bridge should be balanced. So, that means, the four resistance should be exactly matched, but by small change of the mechanical energy. 
So, you have to have a large amount of the output, which turns with output. In order to achieve that, location of the piezo resistance are a are very important point, important aspect. Where will you place the resistances? And here in this diagram, I will mention how these resistances are placed. Two piezo resistors are oriented, so that they can sense stresses in the direction of their current axis and two are placed to sense stress perpendicular to the current flow. One will be direction of the current axis, other two will be the perpendicular to the direction of the current flow. That is why you can see here all the resistances are made not made in the similar fashion. Here and these two resistances are same similar fashion it is oriented, but these two are not similar fashion, not similar fashion, is not it. And you can see here the R 1 and R 3 are parallel to the opposite edges, but R 2 and R 4 are perpendicular to the opposite edges. Okay. So, that if there is a deformation on the beam, so the change of since one is a parallel, one is a perpendicular, the change will be more, so that your pickup signal will be more. The resistance change in the first two piezo resistors will always be opposite to that of the other two, because we have placed in opposite fashion. Two are parallel to this, another two is a perpendicular to opposite edges. So, the resistance change will be opposite. In membrane, two piezo resistor can be placed parallel to the opposite edges of the membrane and the other two perpendicular to the other two edges just now as I mentioned. Okay. Now, what will happen if the membrane is bent downwards? If the membrane which is shown here is bent downwards that means, if you apply pressure on it, it will cause tensile stress on the membrane surface at the edges at the edges means this is this is the edge this is the edge this is the edge and this is the edge on the four edges it will produce tensile stress the parallel resistors the resistors which are parallel to the opposite edges this is the parallel r1 and r2 opposite edges the parallel resistors are under lateral stress and so a decrease in resistance, whereas the perpendicular ones are under longitudinal stress and so an increase. So, if you place resistance in this fashion, so two resistance which are parallel, they will undergo the lateral stress and due to which the resistance will decrease and two resistance will experience perpendicular stress, longitudinal stress and because of which resistance will decrease. So, two will increase another two will decrease. So, from the original value total difference is more and because of that effect what will happen? You will get a large amount of the signal pickup. Okay. So, that is the, uh, the so you now you understand the position of the piezo resistance on the membrane are a crucial phenomenon, crucial matter, crucial uh, judgment to get much more sensitivity. Now, in Western's bridge, the resistance change is directly converted to a voltage signal. In response to a differential pressure change delta P on a membrane, the differential output voltage delta V is delta V equal to delta R by R into V s, where R is a zero stress resistance to the output voltage after the change of resistance because of the stress. Now, here is the bridge and how to connect this is the output voltage, here you are applying the input voltage and the R 1 equal to R 3 opposite R equal and R 2 and R 4 are this as I told you one will experience 
the lateral stress, another will experience the longitudinal stress. So, as a result of which one will be 1 plus alpha 1 R naught, and this is 1 minus alpha 2 into R naught, and V naught by V s in terms of resistance is expressed by this relation R 1 R 3 minus R 2 R 4 divided by R 1 plus R 2 into R 3 plus R 4, which if you replace the resistances in terms of the, al the alpha 1 and alpha 2, the piezoresistive coefficients under lateral stress and longitudinal stress. One is on lateral stress, other in for longitudinal stress, alpha 1 and alpha 2. So, according the resistance value will change and now if you put those, replace those resistance in terms of alpha 1 alpha 2, then V naught by V s will give you this relation. Okay. Now, alpha 1 alpha 2 change is the important parameter which you have to get from the, from other sources. There are tables available where you can get the piezo resistance coefficient change with respect to the stress developed. Now, the pressure sensitivity is defined as the relative change of the output voltage per unit of applied differential pressure and is expressed in millivolt by volt bar and it is mathematically it is expressed as delta V by delta P 1 by V s is equal to delta R by delta P into 1 by R that is the, the sensitivity, pressure sensitivity. Okay. Now, here is a table which shows mechanical properties of the materials used in different micro sensors. What are those properties? Young's modulus, yield strength, Poisson's ratio, fracture toughness, Knoop hardness. These are the mechanical properties which are which are the parameter people look for for selecting the proper material for sensing the mechanical energy. And here materials normally used are SC single crystal silicon, polycrystal silicon, silicon dioxide, silicon nitride silicon carbide, diamond, aluminum and PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate which is the <coughs> organic polymer. So, polymers are there, C rubbing materials are there, silicon carbide, silicon dioxide, silicon nitride to dielectric material and semiconductor materials are there, diamond is also there. Now, if you compare then in many respect we will find the single crystal silicon has very good mechanical properties which I mentioned earlier also. Now, sometime I will concentrate now on micro machine pressure sensor. So, micro machine pressure sensor is a mechanical sensor which occupy the major, major chunk of the mechanical micro sensor market. Okay, the pressure sensor and what are the various ranges of pressure sensor used for various application it is shown in this table. 0 to 105 kilo Pascal many fold pressure that means that is for miscellaneous application for many many uh, equipments or many many applications. Barometric pressure normally used 50 to 105 kilo Pascal. Exhaust gas recirculation, there people use 0 to 105 kilo Pascal again. Fuel pressure is 0 to 105 kilo Pascal. Tire pressure of the automobile 500 kilo Pascal, this is the pressure range. So, accordingly your design will change. Which range you are, are interested to measure the pressure, depending on that your microstructure design you have to make. Active suspension hydraulics that is 20,000 kilo Pascal, climate control 50 to 105 kilo Pascal. Climate control means basically the barometric pressure. So, these are different pressure ranges for different applications. Now, here are again some applications related to biomedical, 
pressure sensor is shown and in the left side you can see the diagram here is basically the muscle contraction and then it, it, it will create a pressure if you pump inside your body. So, you see here a pressure a, 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 you can see here this particular portion a, a pressure sensor is fixed on that muscle. So, that during the expansion and contraction of that muscle in how much pressure is created on the muscle that you can monitor and it is basically connected to a catheter. So, if it is a biological sensor two things you have to remember always one the sensing material or the catheter through which you are guiding the pressure sensor must be biocompatible. So, you will not harm the biological fluids you, you should not react with the biological fluid inside the body that is known as the biocompatibility. So, here is a catheter arrangement is shown in the diagram in this side you can see the this is the wire which is which is basically passing through it and then uh, the uh, this catheter outer diameter you can see here is a point 5 uh, the uh, millimeter. So, this is the catheter diameter which can easily uh, pass through your body through vein or some something else and sensor is placed here. So, this is fixed on to your on to your muscle or biological body whose contraction expansion you want to measure. And the blow up view is shown here in this picture down picture and you can see here the some faint figure is there the kind of uh, the uh, bridge or some kind of uh, membrane kind of thing has been formed here on the material which is micromachine and fixed in the catheter the small portion is the blow up version is shown here. Okay. So, this is one kind of pressure sensor which is different from the barometer application or tire pressure application. Okay. Now, another kind of the pressure sensor we will see here in the next view graph that is here for intraocular pressure measurement that is also an important application area that means in your eye there are fluids flowing inside the eye and the flow of the fluid on the eye how much pressure is applied on the retina that is very important for perfect view. That means, if the pressure changes your vision capacity is also going to change. So, the, the eye specialist many times they measure the pressure in pressure of the fluid in your eye. So, in order to measure you need a sensor pressure sensor for intraocular pressure measurement and there you have to have a media which must be flexible which is known as a pressure sensor skin. So, this small portion you can see here these are the sensors you can see these are sensor 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 different kind of sensor and these are are actually pasted on a on a biocompatible skin which is known as a pressure sensor skin and the whole wafer is flexible. So, that perfectly it can you can place it on the retina retina is not a plain surface ok it can it can it the 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 module or the sensor you want to fix must have flexibility. Okay. So, now if you fix that and now a if you want this is one kind of pressure sensor on surface you can fix, but if you want to have if you want to sense the pressure inside your eyeball or inside the eye some interior portion then you have to drive the sensor through a ribbon and here is shown in this kind of sensor this is a flexible ribbon which is going inside, uh, in, inside your the interior interior location of eye. So, here is the tip and in this tip the sensor is mounted and this tip is the enlarged version of the tip is shown here, here is the pressure sensor you can see the enlarged version 
this is fixed on the tip and through the ribbon you can you can push it into the interior location to measure the intraocular pressure. So, this is another kind of application which is totally different from automobile pressure application or barometric pressure application. So, obviously, most crucial as I mentioned there has to be very very small in size and there has to be uh, uh, has to materialize to be biocompatible at the same time there should not be any hysteresis those properties has to be maintained when you are designing this kind of sensor or you are going to fabricate this kind of sensor. Now, so the micromission pressure sensor if we continue our discussion on that it is one of the sensor which has evolved at the beginning of the microsystem or MEMS technology the first type and most matured silicon micromachine sensor with widespread commercial availability. I think out of the MEMS sensor available in the market commercial, commercial availability pressure sensor is the requirement or availability is the highest is the most matured largest market is in automotive sector with nearly 20 percent growth every year of the only pressure sensor 20 percent growth every year. Piezo resistive and capacitive are the two basic types of micromachine pressure sensor people are now concentrating and also marketing. Two common methods to fabricate pressure micro sensors are bulk micro machining of silicon and surface micro machining of polysilicon. When they go for further miniaturization and having some having some circuit adjacent to the sensor, then they go for go for surface micro machining using polysilicon. But if you do not need the circuit only the pressure sensing element then for example, in car tire pressure you want to measure only pressure there is no signal conditioning circuit in that locality because car mechanical vibration and rotation is tremendous with that mechanical vibration and rotation if you integrate certain circuit surely reliability of the circuit will not be very good. So, in those cases this the circuits are basically these are uh, the uh, signal conditioning circuits are in, in infrared region, IR sensors are used and, and the remote using the remote uh, um, control with the IR energy, the electronics is kept not in that harsh environment, but in other location is kept there and it is, it is accessing remotely. But there you can use the bulk micro machining of silicon because you need much more stability, you need the, the maximum sensitivity. Okay. Silicon diaphragms are the commonly used microstructure in such sensors. In most cases either silicon diaphragm or the cantilever at the tip or at the bend of the cantilever there you can make the, I have shown the diagram you can make the sensor. Now, these are two kinds, two possible mechanics of the pressure sensing normally made here. The one is a piezo resistive another is a capacitive you can see here which I explain here the some cross section view graph is shown. So, that you can understand easily. So, this is the mass here is one resistance this is one resistance and this is another resistance. So, regions of high stress under the stress if the mass is bent downward so, automatically the resistance which is placed here and here that will be in the high stress region okay, here and so automatically the regions of high stress and this will change okay. and here is another structure which is a capacitive structure. There you can see that here uh, the, 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 this is here basically two structure this is the one this is the second. So, first structure you can make the membrane and there you can have an electrode after having electrode you membrane then another another uh, uh, the layer uh, that is on separate silicon wafer you can design the cover and the cover is also etched 
and then there also you can you can attach the aluminum pad so that this is the parallel plate capacitance and the gap you can adjust you can micro machine this top layer to make the gap and here you see you are not going to use the material properties to sense that means you may not use silicon here it is basically the external capacitance you are meeting parallel plate capacitance. So, there this is, is not necessary that always you use the silicon you may use glass also glass micro machining and but thing is that at the end of the fabrication of these two electrode plates you have to bond it that is the cover and the bottom layer has to be bonded. So, that bonding is the either eutectic bonding or you can have uh, the uh, the epoxy bonding or uh, the thermal compression bonding different kind of bondings are available bonding anodic bonding technique that I will discuss detail in some other lecture. So, there at the end you have to fix up these two. Similarly, here now now this in this kind of capacity sensor if there is a say pressure in this side the membrane will bend in this fashion. So, automatically here the gap you see what are the gap here that gap is changed here in this portion. So, accordingly the capacitance will change. So, these are the two mechanics of pressure sensing arrangement. So, now here is again the simple piezoelectric tube and capacity pressure sensors some another diagrams are shown here similar kind of diagram. So, the location and the encapsulation is shown here these are the resistance positions here and here is the capacitance the parallel plate capacitance which is the function of the gap as well as the area. Now, here are the three structures basically here in this particular diagram you can see this is capacitive. And, and this capacity in the bottom one you can see there are three pieces of the microstructure. Top is a pyrex glass, bottom is also pyrex glass and the middle we have used silicon. So, three layer and here instead of making one capacitance. So, what has uh, what uh, um, uh, is done here you can see there are four capacitors and out of the four capacitor two capacitors are made on the rim portion and those capacitors will not going to are not going to change due to the pressure on the proof mass. So, this location and you can see this one and this one these two are basically on the it is not shown clearly this is on the rim side. So, they are they are basically known as the reference capacitors. Now, with respect to reference case when these are two sensing capacitance this one and this one. Now, the pressure if you apply like that in the cavity the proof mass is going to go up. So, accordingly this will change, but this will not change. So, you can have the differential, differential capacitance that is very important. Why the differential capacitance is important? Because if you go for only single capacitance the problem is the parasitics lot of parasitic capacitance will be there in the complete structure. Those parasitics are coming if there are some metal uh, there is some layer separated by dielectric median on the silicon wafer or even you are using bonding pad they will contribute some capacitance. Even any ground plane is there with respect to the semiconductor they will there will be some parasitic capacitance and in you know, a wiring to because you are using the connecting wire connecting wire you are when this is moving on the in, in the in the package. So, two wires are separated by air, air is a dielectric. So, that will contribute certain capacitance those are parasitic unaccounted capacitance and those effect has to be neglected. So, they what has been done. So, that is why the they, 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 they go for differential capacitance measurement that means, whatever the parasitic let it be there but if uh, two are fixed similar capacitance two are changed because of the pressure change and the proof mass will change those two will change. So, 
if we go for this kind of technique, then perhaps we can avoid most of the parasitic effect in our measurement. The major difficulties in this kind of uh, the sensor is the parasitic capacitance effect. Okay. Now, the working principle of this kind of pressure sensor is the deflection in the diaphragm can be measured using the piezoresistive strain gauges located in the region of the maximum strain. Strain gauges are made from doped silicon and designed in pairs with a redoubt circuit such as Wheatstone's bridge. Change in strain can be related to the applied pressure. So, these are the basic is a nothing new I explained earlier also. The working principle is again the relationship between the pressure change and output voltage is like that. V output is proportional to delta which is proportional to pi into p minus p naught. This pi is the piezoresistive coefficient p and p naught. P naught is the, the constant pressure in the vacuum in the chamber and p is the external pressure. Okay. Single crystal silicon is an excellent material for diaphragm because neither creep or hysteresis occur. Silicon does not have any hysteresis effect, it neither have creep effect. So, this is an ideal material for the diaphragm. Straight forward measurement of pressure in the range of 0 to 1 mega Pascal is possible with the help of the piezoresistive pressure sensor. Now, in case of capacity pressure pickup, what is the basic principle? A capacity bridge can be formed with two reference capacitors and the two and the output voltage is related to the deflection of the membrane delta x, this is the deflection and the applied pressure p minus p naught, the V out will be proportional to delta c and which is again proportional to delta x, delta x means you are going to change the deflection as a result of which the gap between the two parallel plates will going to change and which will change which is proportional to p minus p naught. So, that are basically p minus p naught change is going to change first delta x deflection change, delta x is changing the delta c and delta c is changing to v out. So, the, that means is a not direct there are certain steps through which you are getting the voltage change. Accurate positioning of the pickup electrode is a crucial that we have seen. Now, the basic pressure sensor is a absolute sensor that is referred to with respect to vacuum. There are three kinds of pressure sensor. One is the absolute pressure sensor, where the P naught equal to 0. That means, inside the cavity, cavity has to be kept in vacuum. So, pressure is measured with respect to the vacuum, that is the absolute pressure. Second one is gauge type pressure sensor, that is a reference to atmospheric pressure and atmospheric pressure means P naught equal to 1 atmosphere. That means, inside the cavity where the capacitance is the parallel plate capacitance are fabricated, there the atmospheric pressure is to be maintained that is known as a gauge type pressure sensor. Another is known as differential or relative type, there P naught inside the cavity is constant, but that value may change may not be atmospheric pressure, but may other pressure there you can have a differential or relative pressure. Okay. Now, these are the working principles. In the next class, I will just discuss on the compression and total design and analysis of a particular typical piezoresistive the uh, cap, uh, pressure sensor. Okay. Compression as well as the fabrication and design, how go for designing, how do we analyze, analyze this, this part I will discuss in the next class. Thank you very much.